Hello, my name is McGill, and welcome to Glock Store TV. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, today we're going to go ahead and talk about the um, titanium safety plunger and the installation procedure of the titanium safety plunger. And you'll see it comes into a uh, package just like this. Uh, first, a lot of people ask, well, why do I need a titanium safety plunger versus a, uh, uh, the standard factory steel one? And there are some advantages to titanium over steel. As you know, the titanium is a harder metal or material that can be polished to a smoother polish than standard steel. Additionally, uh, the safety plunger we sell is shaped somewhat different than the factory. Whereas the factory is beveled, this one is rounded. And that plays uh, a difference in, um, in how it interacts with the gun. And the bottom line on why you need a titanium safety plunger is because it will provide you with a lighter trigger pull, which in turn gives you better accuracy. The lighter the trigger pull, the less chance you are to disrupt the sight picture as you pull the trigger. So if it's a harder trigger pull, a longer stroke, and as you are aiming the gun and you've got those sights lined up, you have a tendency to alter that if the trigger pull is harder or heavier. So that being the case, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about the um, installation uh, procedure real quick. So I've got a Glock 21 here, and first and foremost, I want to ascertain that the gun is in fact unloaded. So there is no magazine in the gun. I've already dropped that out. I do see that the trigger is in the fired position. I also note here on the side that the um, extractor, you'll notice that it is flush with the frame. If there were a round in the chamber, this uh, little dimple or a little ledge would stick up a little bit and I would visually be able to see that as well as be able to uh, uh, touch that and know that there's some kind of brass inside there. But no matter what, I still want to keep the gun pointing in a safe direction, keep my finger off the, safe, off the trigger and pull the slide back and inspect, visually inspect the chamber to make sure there are no rounds inside. And yes, in fact, it is empty. So now I'll let that go, and then I'll go ahead and pull the trigger in a safe direction, always keeping the, the gun pointed in a safe direction, whether it's loaded or not. It's a good habit. To get to this part, the uh, safety plunger, or uh, trigger safety, it's also referred to as, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and um, disassemble or, or just break the gun down in a standard fashion. Pull the slide back, pull down on the slide lock lever, or the takedown lever, release the slide and push it forward, and then take the slide off the... Um, the frame or receiver of the gun. So there's the frame of the lower. I'll put that down. And here's the upper. And let's go ahead and look and see exactly where the uh, safety plunger lives. It lives right here. <clears throat> and one of the functions of this, or the primary function is, it is a safety device. So you always want to have this in the gun when you shoot because the striker cannot go forward unless this is depressed. So let's observe real quick here. If your camera pulls out just a little bit, you'll see here's the striker. I want to pull the striker in the rear position. Now, you know the striker is under spring pressure, so I can pull that back, and that's basically what makes the gun go bang. This is the striker lug. So I can pull this back and let it go all day long. It's not going to go forward to protrude out of the breech face unless this is depressed. And that is depressed when you pull the trigger by the trigger bar and what they call it, uh, a bird's eye. Actually, it's this little piece that sticks up. And you'll notice how they interact with one another. So this bird's eye, so I'm going to pull the trigger in a cocked position, will travel up. And actually, just that slight movement right there, it rolls over top of the trigger safety or the safety plunger that we're talking about installing here. So this metal-to-metal -metal contact is what we're talking about reducing the friction. With less friction, you have a lighter trigger pull. And it really does make a difference. And uh, not only that, um, the shape of the factory, as I mentioned, is different than the shape of the performance part. Uh, this is more of a beveled edge where the performance part has more of a, uh, a rounded edge. So if you can imagine how the uh, trigger bird's eye head there is rolling over top of this to depress that. So now back to the safety function. As you pull the trigger, this gets pushed down and watch what's going to happen to the uh, striker. See the striker move? The striker moved by gravity down. Now, the striker can't go forward unless that's depressed. 
So I'm going to take the uh, barrel out here real quick. And you'll see then in here, there's the striker head or firing pin head sticking out. Now again, I'll go ahead and pull it back one more time. Notice how that popped up, that being the uh, safety plunger there. And I'll push it down one more time, simulating what would happen when you pull the trigger. And it allows that to go forward, just like that. So our objective is to have a lighter trigger pull because that will allow us to increase our accuracy. But at the same time, we don't want to sacrifice this safety principle because it's very important because the gun will not go bang unless you are pulling on the trigger. That's one of the things about the Glock. This is physically impossible for this striker to go forward unless this safety plunger is depressed. And that can't be depressed unless you're actually pulling the trigger. So all those things in mind. Now we want to go ahead and replace the, um, the factory part with our performance part. And the performance part comes with two things. One, not only the, uh, uh, the safety plunger itself, but also a replacement spring, which is a reduced power spring that will give a little less strength to uh, depress. So there is the safety plunger. Notice the rounded edge and the spring. Okay, so we are now going to remove the factory piece. Uh, this uh, is a relatively simple procedure, but a lot of guys, uh, you know, get balled up with it a little bit because they have trouble taking off the slide cover plate. And uh, as you know, we sell uh, custom slide cover plates, so we have another video on the slide cover plates. Uh, but I'll show you the procedure for this. And it's very simple once you get it. Uh, the, the hard way is to sit there and try to pry that thing off with a finger or a screwdriver or a knife. And uh, not only uh, is that, you know, much more difficult, uh, but also you're going to ruin this plastic part because it gets all scuffed up and, and they look pretty bad. So the easy way is to reduce the spring pressure that captures this in the slide. Now, if you look really close here, you're going to see the black plastic part, and that is the uh, spacer sleeve. Okay, I removed my punch there. That spacer sleeve is black plastic and it goes all the way up to here and it actually captures the slide cover plate. There's a spring, which is the firing pin spring, that pushes that spacer sleeve up. So what I need to do is reduce the pressure by getting in here with a punch or even a ballpoint pen and pushing that down. Once I do that, I can basically thumb this off. And here's the proper way to do this. You go ahead and grab this guy. You can anchor that here like so. Anchor the slide like that. Put your thumb up on top of that um, slide cover plate. And there are serrations there. Make sure you're not sweaty or greasy. And then take a punch or, like I said, a ballpoint pen and just push down on the black plastic piece. And then you can thumb this off with your thumb pressure just like that. And there it comes. And you want to capture those springs inside there. They should not fly across the room, but they could. And many times people call us and want to buy little springs because they are lost in the... Uh, the forest of the carpet below them. <laughs> so capture that with your thumb and just push this guy off all the way, making sure that none of the parts fly out. All right, easy enough so far, right? And so you can see here the spacer sleeve and the extractor depressor plunger and the assembly of the extractor depressor plunger. So we're going to go ahead and take out the uh, extractor depressor plunger because we want to take pressure off of the extractor. You can see that runs all the way down. And then also, we're going to go ahead and take out the um, actual uh, firing pin, uh, because that is intersecting with this whole thing, being the um, trigger safety. Pull that guy out. There's our whole firing pin assembly. And now let's get ourselves back to uh, the ex extractor itself and the safety uh, uh, plunger. To remove the extractor, all we have to do is push down on the safety plunger, and the extractor is going to fall out just like that. So make sure that's over a table. That's the actual claw that grabs hold of the shell itself. And then uh, the safety plunger is going to come right out. And on the factory version of this thing, it will actually have the spring captured. Now the spring is, uh, is put in and twisted in to that spot. So to take it out, you have to twist it out. To put it in, twist it in. 
all right? Seed it and twist it, and it'll kind of find a home for itself. So, now what I want to notice here, what I'd like you to see, is um, the difference between the factory parts and the, um, the performance parts. Like I said, you'll notice the beveled edge more than the rounded edge. So we feel you get a, le a little better action with the rounded edge. Also notice the weight or thickness of these springs. So, that's basically it. Uh, the, um, the proof really is in the pudding is that you'll find that you get a little lighter trigger pull. And combine that with all the other parts, you get a better trigger pull, you get better accuracy. So let's put it back together. Uh, first things first is uh, we're going to take the uh, titanium safety plunger and the spring. And be aware that this spring is a little smaller and so it's not going to lock itself in there like the factory does. Okay, it's just going to sit. So we want to be very aware that when we put it back in the gun, it doesn't get kinked or it doesn't get uh, turned to its side. So I'm going to, instead of turning it upside down, I'm going to kind of just put the slide over on top of it and get it working that way. Now, before I do anything, I just want to make sure it has freedom of movement, and, and it does. So it looks like it's, it's all good. Next, I want to take the extractor itself, and you'll notice it really only goes in one way with this big uh, round leg down. And I'm going to put the extractor started in here. And then I've got to push this safety plunger down, and that'll capture it, and basically captures both pieces. So they intersect with one another, where you put the, the extractor in, and the safety plunger will grab hold of it. So now they're both in there, all right? To remove it, I would just depress that. Next, I can go ahead and put the uh, actual striker back in, and make sure that has some movement as well. That looks good. And then the safety or the depressor plunger assembly goes back in the hole. All right. So that's basically it. Now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, slide cover plate on. And this is uh, fairly just a, a, a simple process. But again, just a little tip will tell you this, that um, we want to get this uh, slide cover plate started first with our thumb. And then I'm going to come up here with a thicker punch just so I can push down the spacer sleeve. And then I go back to the thinner punch or the small punch so I can push down this uh, depressor plunger. And once I get that down there, voila, that's always a good sound. The click was the uh, spacer sleeve snapping back up into place into the back of this uh, slide cover plate. Okay, now, before we even put it back in the gun, I just want to test one thing. If I, de if I depress this, will the striker fall? And it does. And the striker's out there. So try it again. Looks like I've got good freedom of movement. Looks like it can't go forward until I press that. So it looks like it's working. I'm going to go ahead and drop the barrel back in and the uh, guide rod. This is a brand new factory gun. <coughs> so I'm going to see this uh, trigger pull drop about three quarters of a pound, just by that. Nice. And I can definitely feel the difference. And I think you will too. The uh, titanium part being that it is a harder and smoother finish than the steel part, and because of the rounded edges versus the beveled edge, give you a slightly less trigger pull, which will increase your accuracy. I hope that helped you. I'm Lenny McGill. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.